everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Sharon and this is a channel that is dedicated to all things related to narcissism. I make videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on all types of topics related to narcissism. So if you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any videos. I would really appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up. It's a free way you can help me out. And definitely don't forget to leave a comment because I like to read what you have to say. Freedom is very expensive. It costs more than many people are truly willing to pay. Right now, as I make this video, I'm terribly homesick and so are my kids. We miss New Hampshire. Somebody recently asked me in the comments section if New Hampshire's license plates still say live free or die on them. Yes, they do. Politics aside, the truth is that New Hampshire isn't quite so live free or die anymore. That can seem extreme, but I fully endorse it. I believe it. I live that. Maybe it's in my blood. Three of my ancestors came over on the Mayflower. I told the woman who asked about the live free or die that often I put a picture I took in my videos of a statue of John Stark. He's the man who penned that phrase, live free or die. I know I've mentioned I homeschool my kids. There's that freedom I love. Last year at a co-op, my daughter took New Hampshire history for her history credits and she learned about John Stark. My daughter and I joke that John Stark is our ideal man, don't tell Joe, and he lived right near us. We went to his house, that's where I got that picture. For him, for us, there are worse things than death. John Stark believed in freedom. He fought for freedom. He was all in. The type of dedication he had is difficult to describe because it's an entity of its own. It's a force. We can all see the glory and freedom attained. But what isn't seen is the, what the pursuit looks like, the fear that makes you dizzy and nauseous, and deliberately choosing courage over and over, even when you don't feel it, when your back is against the wall, when your children have to sacrifice, knowing hiding from the hard choices is unacceptable, burning every bridge, watching your children suffer and doing it anyways. That's no joke. That's hell. Narcissism brings hell to your front door. Your worst fears are wrapped up so enticingly beautiful. What a shock you're in for. No one will understand what must be done except other victims. And the truth is that even then, many, many, most will stay at the mercy of others, relying on someone else to change or behaving differently to fix your situation. Never be at someone else's mercy ever, only your own. I got away, but not without paying dearly. I'm going to talk about what the price of freedom really looks like. My children lost the childhood I wanted for them. I didn't have a good childhood, and as an adult, I sacrificed and made decisions that I thought protected them. However, at the end of the day, they saw just as much as me. I failed. But hiding from my fears and failure are unacceptable. It's better to spend a year in hell than let a part of you be taken away. My children are both my weakness and my strength. I've made a deliberate choice to give my family a gift. That gift is that I'm almost always cheerful, upbeat, and positive. I want my kids to be surrounded by that. Settling into my new life has challenged that. In so many ways, you don't have a choice in what's happening. But always, always you can choose how you face it. Second by second, you have to remember that, and I'm trying to do that this week. My kids are unnaturally brave. The day before we left New Hampshire, I had a complete breakdown for an hour or two. I was under so much stress. I had to get new phones for my kids and I, and I waited until the day before to do that. Now, the reason I did that was out of fear, because my ex and I were both on the Verizon account. We had a family plan, and any time one of us had an issue with the phone, the other one would get texts notifying us, like second by second, it seemed, on what was happening. My ex had an issue with his phone a couple months ago, and I was bombarded with texts all day from Verizon giving me an update on the phone. So I was terrified that my ex was going to get an update on the new phone, that I was switching information over to a new phone. So I waited till the day before. And then I was trying to switch all the information over so my kids' phones were okay. My phone was having a lot of trouble. So I ended up having to go down to Verizon that day, the day before, 
and I thought the problem was fixed. And then that afternoon, so Joe was coming in at midnight. So that afternoon, I'm still dealing with Verizon. I didn't have a lot of time to deal with it. I had to deal with it that day. I had so much to do. I was still trying to pack. I was trying to get the U-Haul to the house. I was packing all these animals. I was absolutely, I, I was under stress that I could not handle and I lost it. So at one point I called Verizon. I was trying to, I just needed to ask them a question. Now the problem was that the guy at Verizon gave me the wrong phone number for my phone. It was off by a digit. I didn't know that. So I was trying to fix this phone and there was no phone in existence. So I tried to call, I'm trying to deal with this and I could not get through to somebody. I literally started screaming into the phone. I just, I lost it and I scared my son. He was afraid. So I left. I had to go to Verizon yet again. I was supposed to go. I was working at a consignment gallery. I was supposed to bring stuff down there to drop off. I was trying to make extra money doing that. I had to blow off the appointment because I had to go to Verizon. And so I'm driving down there. I'm crying. I'm talking on the phone to Joe. He ended up a thousand miles away comforting my son because I was in the middle of having a breakdown. So I come home later and I apologize to my son. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm under so much stress. And then he starts comforting me. Mommy, it's okay. We're so close now. We're almost there. You just have to make it a few more hours. I'll do anything I can to help you. This is my 15 year old. This same child, I willed him into existence. You know, they say that God won't give you more than you can handle. And I've heard people say, yes, he will. Well, in my case, he definitely did not. I had secondary infertility. I could not get pregnant with my second child. And I really believe I, I was not okay. I, that was, oh my gosh, when I couldn't get pregnant with my son, that was the, that was stress. I don't, I don't know that I would have made it through if I didn't eventually get pregnant. I believe because I couldn't handle it. I literally willed this child into existence. And this same child's pain has fractured my soul. Two days ago, I got a message from a friend of mine. I'm going to read you the text message that he sent me, and then I'll explain what it means. I led court tonight. Sam asked about so-and-so again, and he can't wait to see him. I assured Sam that we all miss so-and-so in the family. But they'll be back once it's safe. But I didn't give away any detail. Core is a church group my son goes to. I mean, Crash of Rhinos. And my friend was leading the group that day. My son loves this group. It's every Tuesday. And he's been going to it for a couple of years. It's a sacrifice that he can't go anymore. And I think about it every Tuesday. Every Tuesday when it's time to go to Core, we're not going. I think about it. Sorry, I'm like crying my way through these videos these days. So I, I think about it every Tuesday when he can't go. And here's my son, my beautiful son, who would love nothing more than to be able to just be a regular kid and go to core. But instead, he's a thousand miles away trying to make new friends when he has beautiful friends in New Hampshire, all because of something his father did. And we can't be there anymore. And here he is, the subject of a conversation of other people at CORE, talking about him. And we all miss him. And we can't wait to see him again. My son wants to be there, and he can't. And it's so unfair. My kids had to give up so much. I want to bring him home, but I can't. And it makes me angry. My ex, in some ways, has given me this beautiful gift that I didn't expect because he's not fighting me on anything. He's just given up. He's just given up. Like, the, the kids are mine. And that makes me angry, too, because I have these beautiful children, these loving, kind, generous children. Yesterday, I started a new job. And so I'm at work at my new job, and my new boss told me that somebody had brought in all this Chick-fil-A and he's like, oh, you can have a sandwich and some fries. Like, take it home with you, whatever, eat it here. And I said to him, like, oh, actually, I don't eat chicken because I don't eat chicken because I have pet chicken, so I feel weird eating chicken. But I was like, oh, thinking to myself, well, I'll take it for my kids. So I was only supposed to take one sandwich. So here I am on my first job, and I snuck two sandwiches into the bag. So I was like, well, I have the two kids. And my kids were going out that night. They were starting a new youth group. They were trying to make new friends, so they're going to this new youth group. 
and I could, I was only supposed to take one sandwich and I snuck two out and I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm like stealing on my first day of the job, I'm like taking this chicken sandwich. Can you imagine me getting fired from taking a, or for taking a chicken sandwich? So here I am, I wasn't working at Chick-fil-A either, so I'm just brought them in. So here I am with the two sandwiches and the first thing my daughter says is, well, what about so-and-so? I texted them to tell them that I was on the way home and she's asking about Joe's son. Well, what about him? He doesn't have a sandwich. My kids are so generous in that way. That's their first thought. My birthday is Saturday, tomorrow. Yesterday, my kids went out to buy stuff to make me a cake. I didn't ask them to do that. They just did it. My daughter said, can we use the car? I really want to go to the store because I want to make you a cake. What type of cake do you want? I want to make you any cake you want. And there are my kids going out in the middle of the day so they can make me a cake. And I love orchids. And my daughter said to me, we want to buy you a special one, a fancy one. And I went to this website that sells them. And they told me to choose whichever one I want. I know how blessed I am. But what about them? Are they blessed by me? This horrible thing happened. Some of you know that with this move, I cut my parents off. I had to. My second full day of freedom, my parents turned me into the police. So my ex was looking for me. They did that, believing I was going to be arrested. I didn't sacrifice everything to put up with that. And I got this email from my father yesterday. Hi, Sharon. I've sent a few messages to you and the kids without responses. I'm trying to touch base via email. It's worrying not knowing where you and the kids are living. Give me an update. Thanks, Dad. No, I'm sorry I tried to get you arrested. I'm sorry for what you and the kids are going through. We're here for you. We love you. No, it's all about him. He wants to know where we are, and then he'll probably go ahead and tell my ex this. This is the type of life I'm living. I'm not like the other mothers, and I know that. I accept that about myself. My kids respect it, but I wonder sometimes if they crave something different. They're both fiercely loyal. We're extremely close. But they know life as having to overcome. They know realness in a way I wish they didn't. I'm literally all that my kids have. I'm drowning in guilt over it. Like I said at the beginning, freedom isn't without cost. Driving out into the sunrise with Joe on Christmas Eve was beautiful and romantic, but it was also full of consequences. I've been put in this position to be the strong one. It doesn't matter whether I want to be or not. I am. I have to be. It's been a rough week. You know when someone you love dies and it doesn't seem right that the sun is still shining? That life continues when the person or animal that you love is gone? That's how I felt this week. I'm very sensitive to the small touches of kindness that are so beautiful. How wonderful to feel love. Last night, I laid down in bed with my head resting on Joe's chest and I felt peace. I needed that. I've shared my raw pain in this video, my mother's guilt. Sometimes I'm tired of other people's choices being my problem. All of us have paid the highest prices, but we have two choices. At the end of the day, we can either say, look what I became, or look what became of me. There's such subtle differences in those two sentences. Only one of those is owning your own results. Never allow yourself to have a powerless attitude. Everything in life is a consequence of your choices. Live free or die. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I'm sorry. I've been so emotional in my videos lately. It has been unbelievable trying to adjust to a new life. And it's good. And I'm happy with Joe, but I'm, I'm homesick. And it's a struggle. I, I miss New Hampshire. My kids miss New Hampshire. Settling in is difficult. I'm going to keep pushing through. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm hoping to make a video with Joe this weekend. It's been about a month since we've done a video, and we'll explain why over the weekend. I'm hoping. Now, like I said, Saturday is my birthday, so Joe has to do the video with me, right? So hopefully we'll have that video, and we'll explain what's been going on. There's nothing bad. Joe's been having some personal issues, which we'll talk about. So we'll talk about that over the weekend, hopefully. And I will see you on Monday, whether I'm with Joe or without, but it should be with him. I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm going to try not to keep crying through my videos. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. God bless.